Let's delve a little further into the topic of storage. We'll be looking at three instructions, DAT, DAT, STA, and LDA. And they're all used to allow us to store data from and load data into the accumulator. This assembly program is designed to take in three inputs and repeat them back to the user, but backwards. So it's going to be reversing the order of whatever's typed in. Now, although the program is quite long, we're going to zoom in a little bit so we can see what's going on a bit better. OK, so the program is started and we get stuck straight into that fetch decode execute cycle. Fetching our first instruction, INP, and incrementing the program counter before decoding the instruction. Now we've seen INP before. It takes input and pops the value into the accumulator. The user has entered the number 191, so into the accumulator it goes. Onto line two, where we see a new instruction, STA. Interestingly, STA has a number next to it. That's the operand, which tells it which memory location to use. STA is the mnemonic for store, and it's going to be storing the value that is currently in the accumulator into the memory location it's referenced. Now, in this case, that's line 12. And yes, that is line 12 in the code. The reason for this is that, you'll remember, one of the features of von Neumann architecture is that memory and code look the same and they exist in the same memory space. So when we tell the CPU to store into memory location 12, we're literally talking about line 12 in the code. Let's see that in action then. It identifies line 12. We know that this contains data because of the mnemonic used there, DAT, D-A-T. It's a mnemonic that doesn't do anything. It's simply used to show that the operand, the number, is being used to store raw data. With our data line identified, the system copies the value from the accumulator into this location, and you'll see that DAT0 becomes DAT191. Execution is complete, so on to the next line of code, which is another input instruction, taking input from the user and placing it in the accumulator. This time, the value 35 is going in. Now you'll see why we needed to store it in the first place. The way input works is that it replaces whatever was previously in the accumulator. Without storing the previous value, it would have been completely lost. Line 4 next, and another store instruction. This time, it's asking us to store the value of the accumulator in memory location 13. Line 13, essentially. You'll see that line 13 has a DAT value, the opcode that just means this is data, and currently stores the value 0. Well. That 35 that's sitting in the accumulator is getting copied into that DAT value on line 13. Line 5 is another input command, just the number 1 entered by the user, so that's what gets put into the accumulator. And line 6 is another familiar instruction, the mnemonic OUT, that outputs the value of the accumulator to the screen. So, when we get to the execute phase of the cycle, the number 1 is output to the user. The next instruction fetched is a new one for us. LDA. It's another two-part instruction, and this mnemonic represents the load command. It will load from a memory location into the accumulator. In this case, it will load from memory location 13. Let's watch the execution to see how this works. So, memory location 13, line 13, contains the data 35. The load command copies that 35 into the accumulator, and it's all done. Fetching the next instruction gives us an output instruction. The value in the accumulator is 35, so that's what appears on the screen. Fetching instruction 9 gives us another load instruction. This time it's going to load from memory location 12 into the accumulator. What's in memory location 12? It's data and has the value 191. So that is copied into the accumulator. Yet another output instruction next and with the value 191 in the accumulator, that's what ends up being put on the screen. The instruction for us to fetch on line 11 is the mnemonic HLT, which we know means halt. It stops the fetch decode execute cycle and stops the program. So it's done. We've seen the step-by-step -step execution of a simple program that took three inputs, then printed them out in the reverse order. 
and in the process we added three storage instructions to our repertoire. 